O God, when you went forth before your people, marching with them and living among them, the earth trembled, heavens poured down rain. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome again to our daily Mass. In the Gospel today, Jesus is teaching us true humility, but also seeing him in our fellow man and woman. We need to bear that in mind. Perhaps you've uh, been playing a game when we start Mass as to guess which Paschal candle will be lit each morning. Of the four Paschal candles at the back of the sanctuary here, we don't light them all, we only light one, that's the only one necessary. Um, and we try to even out the, the burning of the candles because no doubt there are many baptisms waiting for when we come back into the church. Many had to be cancelled during this period and there are many more, I expect, in the queue today. So there's a, a little game for you. Today I've lit St. Pius, the one on your extreme right. Um, so uh, Father Tony will probably light a different one. I shan't tell him about this, so you'll, you'll have to guess which one he's going to light. I'm saying this Mass this morning for the deceased members of the messenger family, so we bear them in mind. Eternal rest grant to them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. So let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who restore human nature to yet greater dignity than its beginnings, look upon the amazing mystery of your loving kindness, and in those you have chosen to make new through the wonder of rebirth, may you preserve the gifts of your enduring grace and blessing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and his friends went by sea to Paphos to Perga and Pamphylia, where John left them to go back to Jerusalem. The others carried on from Perga till they reached Antioch in Pisidia. Here they went to the synagogue on the Sabbath and took their seats. After the lessons from the law and the prophets had been read, the presidents of the synagogue sent them a message. Brothers, if you would like to address some words of encouragement to the congregation, Please do so. Paul stood up, held up a hand for silence, and began to speak. Men of Israel and fearers of God, listen. The God of our nation, Israel, chose our ancestors and made our people great when they were living as foreigners in Egypt. Then, by divine power, he led them out and for about 40 years took care of them in the wilderness. When he had destroyed seven nations in Canaan, he put them in possession of their land 
for about 450 years. After this, he gave them judges, down from the prophet Samuel. Then they demanded a king, and God gave them Saul, son of Kish, a man of the tribes of Benjamin. After 40 years, he, dispo he deposed him and made David their king, of whom he approved in these words. I have selected David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will carry out my whole purpose. To keep his promise, God has raised up for Israel one of David's descendants, Jesus, as Saviour, whose coming was heralded by John when he proclaimed a baptism of repentance for the whole people of Israel. Before John ended his career, he said, I am not the one you imagine me to be. That one is coming after me, and I am not fit to undo his sandal. The word of the Lord. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. Through all ages my mouth will proclaim your truth. Of this I am sure, that your love lasts forever, that your truth is firmly established as the heavens. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. I have found David my servant, and with my holy oil anointed him. My hand shall always be with him, and my arm shall make him strong. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My truth and my love shall be with him. By my name his might shall be exalted. He will say to me, you are my father, my God, the rock who saves me. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. You, O Christ, are the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead. You have loved us and washed away our sins with your blood. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After he had washed the feet of his disciples, Jesus said to them, I tell you most solemnly, no servant is greater than his master. No messenger is greater than the man who sent him. Now that you know this, happiness will be yours if you behave accordingly. I am not speaking about all of you. I know the ones I have chosen, but what scripture says must be fulfilled. Someone who shares my table rebels against me. I tell you this now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you may believe that I am he. I tell you most solemnly, whoever welcomes the one I send welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. So the first shoots of the gradual ending of lockdown may beginning to show soon. In many ways, our lives have been greatly affected, if not turned upside down, by this awful virus. In an even more radical way, Jesus turned our understanding of service on its head in adopting the position of a humble servant. Prepared to wash feet, he set an example and established a principle. 
Imagine if the Queen or any other head of state decided to wait at table and attend to the ablutions of her guests for dinner. We'd be shocked, if not scandalized. Jesus washing his disciples' feet caused quite a stir also. People of importance just do not do this sort of thing, the menial tasks. A social reality that is alive and kicking today, even in our own society. Jesus transformed our idea of greatness. In the kingdom, the greatest is the servant. The one who is the least is the greatest. In some parts of Europe, foreigners, so-called guest workers, are imported to perform unsavory cleaning jobs, emptying bins, cleaning streets. On the subcontinent of India, the lowest echelons of society, the outcasts, are considered fit only to sweep and clean up. In the Palestine of Jesus' day, it was only slaves who performed such menial tasks. Jesus' example is this. He served, so we must serve. He chose the lowest place, so we too must choose the lowest place. I love that story of Carol Wachila, who at the tender age of 38 had just been elected Poland's youngest bishop, and he went to a retreat house. Other priests on the retreat did not recognize him, and because he was young, assumed he was a young curate. They insisted that he serve them during their stay. He served them food and drink and fetched and carried for them as they asked. At no stage did he protest and say, do you know who I am? He served them humbly and went on to become Saint, Pope John Paul II. Was it G.K. Chesterton who said, it's not so much a case of Christianity having been tried and found wanting, it's more a case of it having never been tried. As we come together in prayer, let us ask our Heavenly Father to send his Holy Spirit afresh again into each of our hearts, to renew our faith, to renew our enthusiasm, to renew our closeness to our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for his church on earth, for Pope Francis, for all the bishops, for Bishop Richard, for all the clergy of this diocese, many of whom are in total isolation, like you. Let us keep in mind the need for vocations to the sacred ministry of priest, to the religious life, to the diaconate, May he open men's hearts to hear his call into priesthood, to serve him for life in a most rewarding example of service. Lord, in your mercy, let us continue to pray for all those who are battling this coronavirus around the planet. So many places simultaneously still under lockdown. Let us pray that we will act responsibly to curtail this virus. At the same time, easing back to re-enlive our economy once again. Lord, in your mercy. 
Let us continue to pray for all those who feel totally isolated, alone, even friendless, with no one who phones them or inquires after them. We pray for those who are suffering with this disease, particularly those in our own parish and area, in our four hospitals in this parish, particularly all those who are in the intensive care unit in the Royal Surrey County Hospital. We pray for all those who ministry is to, to heal, to comfort, to make well again. Many of whom put their own lives at risk. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for all those who are sick in any way, in desperate need, the hungry, the homeless, the frightened, the orphans, the abused. We ask the Lord to see to their several necessities, to give them a peace of mind, to make his presence felt close to them. Lord, in your mercy, let us commend to God the souls of all the faithful departed this life, particularly our own loved ones. We ask God to have mercy upon them, to grant them that goal of their life, eternal life, in the presence of the Almighty. Lord, in your mercy. Let us ask our Blessed Lady Mary to accompany us in prayer. As we say together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Loving and merciful Father, hear our prayers that we offer to you today. Hear those prayers that are unspoken that come straight from our hearts. We ask you to grant all that is necessary for us and for those for whom we pray. And we ask this in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, 
together with the sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, <clears throat> who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. It's always a great pleasure to be here with you and knowing that so many of you are tuning in each day. It's, uh, it helps us, your priests, and I'm hoping we're, we're helping you in strengthening your faith and that bond of fellowship which joins all Christians together, but particularly our own local community. Just to remind you that if you are, any of you are in need, um, a practical need of someone to get you some shopping or medicines because you're incapable of getting out, or immobile, please make contact with the parish office on the usual uh, email or telephone number. And equally, if you are able to help, if you could let us know, and we'll try and match you up with the need. Just to say once again that um, the three of us in the presbytery always remember the parish in our prayers each day, and we hope that you, we are in your prayers as well. Um, we'll keep together, we'll see this all through, um, we'll come out the other side smiling, I hope. Um, a little bowed, but uh, we'll still be determined to carry on and to use this time, uh, having used this time as, as a great strengthening time to be closer to our Lord, to have more time in our day, which is always the curse normally when we're too busy to pray to the Lord, to give him adequate time. Let us use this time for a great benefit to strengthen us because we're all on our way to eternity. That's what we're looking at. Not too soon, we hope, but we keep there. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. <laughs>